Hello, everybody. Welcome back. This is uh, Dave Wright, the Catalyst Channel. I told you guys I'm going to be making some more videos. And one of the things that I talked about a little bit in some of the smaller videos that I made is that I was going to start a side project, a side podcast called The Idiot Investor. Uh, I was on Twitter following some people and a comedian that I followed for a while that I've become friends with was trying to do some investing and we were going back and forth and other people going back and forth. We started realizing that a lot of people are struggling with understanding money, how to invest uh, in the stock market, crypto and stuff. So we were joking around and calling things the idiot investor. And this is not financial advice. So I wanted to introduce somebody to you um, that I know you're going to like. He's fun. He's a funny guy. He's a comedian first. He was doing stand up in New York City. He's now doing comedy on a podcast called The Crowder Boys. He also has another podcast called Corn Fed with Dalton Pruitt. I'd like to welcome everybody to the show. Welcome Dalton Pruitt. Hi, Dalton. Oh. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> so sorry for making things so professional. I know that we like to just have fun here, but uh, since this is going to be going on, your your channel if you want it's going to go on dave wright the capitalist i thought maybe you could introduce yourself a little bit uh to everybody give yourself a little intro if you don't mind oh yeah my name yes i'm dalton pruitt and i um uh, i guess i used to be a comedian now i'm mostly i, I just do podcasts now um just work, working my way back into uh, something <laughs> I, have, I fell out for a while Everybody knows that. Anybody who knows me knows this. Uh, but yeah, as far as uh, as far as this, as this goes, investing, this has become my new. I don't know if I, I don't know if I call it hobby because <laughs> it's kind of make it's just stressing me out all the time. <laughs> now, <laughs> it's just, I'm just constantly worried and anxious. But yeah, I um, yeah, the idiot investor is sort of my my one of my brain children that i came because what 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 had happened you saw it happen where somehow i had gotten a, a line on a pretty good stock tip yes that actually worked yeah it was the first time i'd ever tried the stock market like i saw that there was something happening with this like failing electric vehicle company <laughs> that has like the company itself the company is called F faraday future intelligent electric Okay. The ticker for anyone who wants is FFIE. <laughs> this, um, is not, this is this, this is not, not financial. <laughs> this, this is not financial advice. Anyone who anyone who's been paying attention to stocks lately probably saw this happen and it's been talked about a lot. But um, I want to remind company. everybody: this is episode one of the yeah. Idiot Investors. So <laughs> this is not yes. financial advice. Yeah, and so uh the the company itself like i think like burned through like a billion dollars over the last five years they got like no money left and they sell an electric vehicle that costs like 300 grand so no one's ever bought one no one drives these yeah uh and there's <laughs> their stock had like gotten pushed down to like i don't know like eight cents and then something happened when i caught it where somebody said hey this stock just like jumped from like nine cents a share to 27 cents a share this might be something we're looking at and so without even, I didn't even like think about what I was doing. I just was like, oh, I, that seems like something. Yeah. I, I don't know what drove me to do this, but I downloaded the Robinhood app and then just bought like a bunch of shares, like not a ton, but you know, the first time I'd ever invest, like tried this, it was like probably more than I than was responsible. <clears throat> and then come to find out that, that it was an actual what they say in the in the world of finance it was an actual short squeeze that was happening so this stock had been like heavily shorted and then enough yeah. people came like bat, and, ran, and banded hedge, together basically the hedge fund had to come back and buy all the stocks up yeah so guys were so, keeping the price high yeah. yeah so they they were able to drive it from when the when the squeeze started it was like nine cents and then i got in it my average buying was 37 cents a share. And then it shot up to like almost $4 a share. Nice. So there were people who made out like fucking bandits on that. They made like hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars, depending on what they bought. Yeah. 
and then I didn't know what I was doing and should have sold when it was at like 360 mm-hmm. sold when it was lower than that. Cause I, there was like, there was a day when everybody decided to sell. So it was just plummeting. And when I like caught it, I, I sold and I made like, I made like 2,500 bucks, which for a first outing, From what was not, your, what was your original entry into it? Like, my average buying was thirty seven cents a share. It was like eight hundred dollars. So you put like eight hundred, and you came out with twenty five hundred profit or twenty five hundred total. Twenty five hundred profit. Nice, it's nice. Yeah, yeah, so it was really good. And then, but because I'm so now a you guys, so now you've pretty much gambled. You have no idea what you're actually. No doing. idea what I'm doing. And you, and you got the bug because this you're was like, a, wow, I just made twenty five hundred bucks. Yeah. So this is yeah. like wildly irresponsible to begin with, and but I paid off, and but because I'm a gambling addict i'm just an addict uh i was like okay so clearly i do know what i'm doing yeah or i have you know i have some sort of like supernatural some gift for stocks so now it's time to like really make my fortune on the stock market <laughs> but then i just started <laughs> making no, like with no yeah, no, so no, then I, I just started know. making wildly irresponsible decisions and investments. Yeah. This and is even, when and I even st- with- started w- watching you. So for those who don't know, uh, sorry to interrupt here, but if you head over, so I'm going to be putting this up on my channel, Dave Wright, the capitalist, but you can also head over and follow Dalton to watch him make uh, ridiculous choices <laughs> on on, I, Dalton, I, I, <laughs> on Twitter. And he has his comedy podcast is the Crowder Boys. Follow him there. They put out some great content. If you like hanging out with the boys, you're going to enjoy that. He also has Corn Fed with Dalton Pruitt. And uh, but I was following him on Twitter when I when I recognized and watched this in terror because I was I'm doing crypto and crypto DeFi, which is a little bit more. Uh, biz, business oriented, so I wanted to get him in, get him into that, dude, get him away I, from the gambling. I immediately went full DGN. Like, <laughs> As we do. As, dude, I mean, I spent a lot of money away in, in my past too, which is how I got to where I'm at now. Is like yeah, because I, I started anymore. I started following all these different stock guys and Reddit account, like Reddit pages, yeah, and then just start going in on all these other tickers, and even and just like immediately was losing money on them, and even tried to go back in on FFIE, like maybe it'll squeeze again, and still lost money on the one I made money on. (laughs) It was like just like chasing that dragon again, and and yeah, just like doing the gambling thing of like, you know okay, one more bet, and then I can make my money back, and then yep. some, and I can get out of this. And just every every decision is <laughs> shit. Because, like, that was, like, during what they call in the uh, – finance. it's not financial advice, but what they call <laughs> in the world of stocks. And all that, that was all happening during a bull run, so the market was, like, really good at that time. Yeah. yeah. It was, like, a month or two ago. And then here lately, the market is the entire market has just been dog shit. Like all the big companies just completely shit the bed uh, a couple days ago. Like Tesla is down a bunch, Amazon is down, McDonald's is down. Yeah, this it's similar with um, even with crypto or whatever. Let me see if I can pull this up. Crypto bubbles here, and we can look. So the we are going to be exploring today the basics of blockchain once we get into this. But oh, actually, so let me share the screen here. So this yeah, is one crypt- site. This is a site that I use called CryptoBubbles.net. It lets you like visually see crypto. So as of today, things look like they're in the green. But if you look at the last week and you look at the last month, we had a lot of red, uh, red going on. Obviously, with crypto, everything is up on the year. But yeah, most of the markets got pretty hard, hit pretty hard. Yeah, well, cri- yeah, crypto is interesting because as enigmatic as the stock market is, crypto seems to be even more of a shadowy mystery. Yes, and, but you know what? You know what's funny is like you would think that like with the stock market being as old as it is, like it's just been around forever, that it would be more like buttoned down, and there would be like some sort of I don't know. 
like when I think of the stock market, I think of like guys in suits and briefcases and mm. well to do, just like stable, whatever. Yeah. But in my adventures, I've discovered that it it might even be more degen. <laughs> of course crypto. it is. Yeah, you start it's it's just it's all boiler rooms, right? It's all people trying to fleece other people. Yeah, yeah because money. because like it, it maybe it didn't always it wasn't always this way, but it seems like with the um in introduction of apps like Robinhood and Weevil making yep. it so accessible, it's just every everybody's got a fucking uh casino on their phone now. Basically, if you want, yeah, if you want to trade it like a casino, then definitely because the idea of the stock market originally is you have a business and it's going well, and you need to generate capital for that business to expand. And you couldn't just go to a bank and get loans and all that stuff. So you would sell stocks to get part of the business. People, you hold that money so that you can invest part of that. And then if it went up, you could sell and get some of your investment back if you if they use the capital properly. But similar to like crypto and similar to that stuff, that's like out the window now. It's like all numbers. Oh, in, that, in that is not how anybody treats it. Now. it it's no, like it no. is just gambling because especially the shit that I've been into, these like micro caps and small cap, like small market cap companies. Mm -hmm. Nobody gives a fuck about the company. That's that's a, like so irrelevant. It just it doesn't even matter. Yeah. It's literally just like charts and graphs and basically like astrology, just trying to predict like what's going to happen. And then, and then also like scams, just like, you know, these different guys will pump this one stock, convince enough people to buy it. It pumps the people who know what they're doing sell during the pump. And then anyone who, you know, then there's people left on the other side of the dump just with their dicks in their hands. So with, crypto you're you people will still do that and you can still get into situations where people are making scam coins there's no business it's called no utility attached to it um so you still have to weed all that stuff out what i would like to work up to if we continue to do this over the next couple of months is showing you decentralized finance where basically every time there's a crypto transaction made there's a fee and if you're the person that's letting them borrow that capital or that liquidity in that pool you get a piece of that fee so rather than if the market's going up across or down you are still getting paid fees uh because you're providing a service to those individuals that need that liquidity or those funds there in order to trade and it kind of takes out some of the scamminess of it. And there's still going to be scams and you can still get into coins that are going to shoot to the moon. You can still do all these meme coins. Um, but, you know, I wouldn't recommend it, but that's a way people are always, that's always going to be there. Somebody's going to always be trying to get rich quick. There's going to be other people that are going to be really balanced. And then there's going to be people in the middle. My portfolio right now has a couple of DGEN plays in it, a couple of little less DGEN, and then some really balanced stuff that's just giving me a, a decent return. But even with even the stuff that I consider very bottom of the line is still making me more money than I could ever get from a savings account or a CD or from a bank or a Roth IRA or whatever. That's why I was so adamant. Dude, all that shit you in crypto. All that stuff now, like Roth IRAs and 401ks and shit. Yeah. When you, what little I understand about any of this, this is not financial advice. Um, Guys, remember the name of the show. This is the idiot investor. Yeah, I'm Dave Wright. This is Dalton Pruitt. <laughs> yeah, this is not financial advice. The all that kind, of, all those like boomer dad ways of investing, like a 401k or whatever, yeah. are not necessarily scams, but also just not going to. They just don't provide you what you're actually trying to do. They, they don't give you that kind of security. No, it, and so I'll, I, I have a lot of finance stuff. So I have a couple of YouTube channels. And so when I go to the feed, I have a different algorithm. And then my Dave Wright, the capitalist channel, I get a lot of Dave Ramsey. And people oh. are calling in and stuff. <laughs> and it's like, he's like, bro, just do this, this, this. And it's, and it's like, they would have to be making $300,000 a year 
to save that percentage. Of his, his advice or, is so always. Just it, it, it just it, doesn't work right now. It seems like his advice is like, I don't even, he, he's such a dickhead because his advice is just like, get rid of everything. Like live as hard scrabble as you possibly can. Just eat fucking like dry rice. Yeah. Don't even, don't cook it. Just swallow a half cup of dry <laughs> rice and wash it down with some, some tap water. Yeah. For efficiency. And, yeah. and, do that for like 15 years until your debts are paid off. And then you can start saving money. It, it, his advice doesn't seem to like really help anybody. So and, when I, and it, and it also, he's so antagonistic too. He seems like he has a fucking chip on his shoulder regarding anyone that's actually like looking to him for help. Yeah. So I'm in the middle of him. I think he's a, maybe he's Gen X, but he seems like a little bit more boomery. No, nah, he's a boomer. And so I think we've talked about this before, but for the audience, I was, I remember when I was making like 350 a week on my 48 hour job, 40 hour a week job. And that covered my rent. And then the next week I could pay utilities and food and stuff for the month, car payment with a little bit next. And then I had about a week to a week and a half of money that I could usually take a week and have some fun with it. And another week for savings. And it was like easier to build the budget. Now, as time went on, I just noticed that that fourth week of money that I used to save just slowly started dwindling. So even though my I was making more money, the inflation was just higher than I could ever go. And then you start dipping into your savings. So if you didn't get into an IRA or 401k or whatever those stuff, and even if you did, a lot of people they have to pull those monies out money out for any sort of emergencies or whatever it's just not a realistic uh, you can still do it but you'd be so hyper plugged into the system like you're saying that i think is going to be gone in a couple of years where i think the beginning of technology is moving towards a digital world so the internet the is still young and now we have the internet of money and if you can get in now by the time you know, it's starting to go almost, it's not even mainstream yet. You'd be on the white water of it and you'd be reaping the woods of it later down. That's why I'm so adamant about crypto right now. But go ahead, Dalton. Yeah, no, I mean, you, I think you're right about that. Cause like the way I understand a 401k is like, yeah, you pay into it and then maybe your company matches it, but it's this pool of money that is being like moved around and invested. So it's, it seems like, Something could happen where you just lose it. It's, or, it's not even it's outside of your control. And with the hyperinflation that's going on with everything, it's like how much are they really making? Like, are they making that great of investments that you're getting this all back? The the reason why um, there's a lot to get into here, but I I know why crypto gets a, a poor name and a lot of stuff, and there is a lot of gambling. But as you mentioned, there's gambling that's going on in any aspect. Of this stuff, you're gonna have greedy people <laughs> trying to trying to make. It's pretty some money. cool because you yeah. can, like, you've talked to me about. This is probably what we're gonna be getting into. Yeah. These more like stable, low risk crypto investments, passive income. With the DGen shit that I'm in on, yeah, you will lose a lot of money on the front end. You're gonna lose a lot. Yeah, but then something will hit, and then <laughs> yeah. you just make stupid fucking money. Yes, that so way. You, so here's the thing: is you can do that in crypto too. And what I would recommend is, if you had an account, for instance, that was dripping off some money, there's ways that you can put like a like a thousand bucks in places and make a couple hundred dollars a month off of that. And and there's people, I have people in my investment group. And actually, if you, I put the links up today. If anybody's interested in joining the investment group. There, um, the links are on Dave Wright, the capitalist. The, you just go to the YouTube channel and you can either join uh, the Crypto Labs membership. It's got courses in there. It's a little, you'll get a little bit of a discount. Um, I forget what it is. I forget what the prices are. It's like 50 bucks a month. So it's only if you're super serious about, if you, get, if you want to get super serious about crypto and DeFi, there's a whole community for the future there. Um, but, anyways, 
where is I going to say? Oh, but you, there's people in that group, and what they'll do is they'll have money that drips off per month, and they'll say, okay, this is my like fun money, and they'll have money that they're invested that's making monthly income from the fees, and then they risk that five hundred dollars at some meme coin that might shoot to the roof. Yeah. Uh, so if they lose it, it was kind of set aside to lose, to get ga- to gamble with. Whereas now, if your whole portfolio thing is to put something in like that and go to the top. And, and I see it with basic crypto, too. People will get – now is the time to be learning crypto and slowly buying into these things. What will happen is next time Bitcoin shoots up to 70K, 75, 80K, everybody will ape in on missing – fear. you know, they have the fear of missing out. And then when they're buying in, we're all selling our crypto. You know what I mean? So we're just fleecing the next people that come in. So the time to get into all this stuff is when it's low, is in the bear market to learn all this stuff. And the time to make your money is in the bull when the bull runs. Yeah. So I'm well, hoping that I, if people that's... tune in now, they can learn and start investing now. And then they postpone their you know, defer their gratification to the bull run to make their profits. But that's the real question is yeah. how many who who's actually gonna who's selling because there's people i've talked to who have this idea because it sounds to me like you treat it more like investing like where there's money and then there's like crypto and crypto generates money and then you sell your crypto for money i've talked to people who buy who own like a certain amount of bitcoin or ethereum or whatever yeah and they've told me like i'm never selling it that they that they think that the Money is just going to go away. At some point, the entire system for money will collapse, and then everybody will ha- crypto will become in this like a necessity. Yeah, and then they'll um, be the ones hold the the new kings. Yes, yes. with all so, the money, the um, new money. So what I do is I have my particular strategy is a ladder in, ladder out. So I have a, I look at the charts. This is something that would be more technical down the road, but we can get into it now since the question came up. And then we'll get into the basics of blockchain and stuff after this, which, was, which I wanted to teach today. But basically, I pick a price in the middle that I'm comfortable with, and I kind of look at the graphs, and I see where it's projected to go and then where it's been. And then I have some uh, stable coins set aside. And if Bitcoin like dips down under, say, 55 it signals me to buy and then I go into the money that I have set aside and I buy Bitcoin at that lower price. And then if it dips again to 50, I buy back in. But I also have it set so that if it goes from 60 to 65, that I sell like 20% of it into cash. And then if it goes up to 70, I sell another 20%. And I have it set so I hold on to 20 that I'll never sell. So that if I miscalculate, because most of the time, in you, you such a small portion of society actually owns Bitcoin right now that it's still volatile. So it's going to keep going up, and then people are going to need to spend their money, and it's going to go down, and it's going up and down. It's going to have a natural ebb and flow how a market should, based on demand of goods and services and investing in businesses versus uh, stored value. So as that fluctuates up and down, um, I'm buying and selling, so I'm using some of the profit to pull, buy back in when it's lower. And then that's just how I'm stacking. They call it stacking Satoshi, which is a Bitcoin is the one coin, but all like a, a 0.001. Those are all Satoshis named after Satoshi Nokayama, Nokiato. The whatever his name is. The name of the, yeah, of the original either. Some people think it's a group. Some people think it's an individual Um, It's most likely a group of individuals that did some coding together. Uh, Maybe not because Banksy. Yeah, because not because not too many people can keep a secret. And like some people, like this guy Hal, has passed away. That they, some people think it was him. That's but then that wallet moved, so now they're like, oh, maybe it wasn't him. But anyways, so what? So. Let me pull up this screen. If you if you're watching this, well, you're going to be watching this in the future. 
this is uh, my website, Dave Wright the Thinker. I didn't know where else to put it. So I also put an article on my Twitter. Um, we can cut and paste it and put it in the description of the of the videos too on Dalton's. Dalton, you think you're going to put this up on CornFed or are you going to put it up on? Um, oh, yeah. I, on I'm the, 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 the progenitor of the idiot investor. This is my baby. Okay. Yeah, I didn't know if you're gonna put it up on Corn Fed or the Crowder Boys. So you'll put this up on Corn Fed. I don't too. even have access to the Crowder Boys channel. That's Craig okay. doing that. <laughs> okay, got you. So <laughs> I'll have this up on my website with the link so you guys can go back through. And if we end up live streaming in the future, I'll put these up ahead of time and then you guys can follow along. Um but this is this is what I'm working through, and I thought that it would be a good good beginner thing. So are you familiar with what a blockchain is, Dalton? I've heard, I've heard that word before. Um, so blockchain is basically a decentralized le digital ledger that's on the internet, but it's decentralized in the fact that multiple computers are working off of the same blockchain so that it can't be like destroyed, altered, changed, whatever. So the beauty of this is you can get on it 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And there isn't somebody who's in control of that data. So that ledger takes all the transactions actions and maintains them across multiple computers and basically the transaction is when you buy bitcoin and you get that receipt on the blockchain it's your value is locked on that ledger and then you take your key from your wallet and we're going to go over wallet and exchanges next week but you would take that to tell them that's yours and then you can take some or all of that value out of that um off the ledger and then once it's taken off, a bunch of decentralized computers do an encryption code to again to see and to confirm that that's been done. And that's um, at least that's how it works with Bitcoin. On Ethereum, it's a little bit different. It's proof of stake. Uh, but basically, blockchain itself is just a digital ledger to keep track of digital value on the internet that can't be copied, stolen, centralized. Uh, and it's open source, so people can go look at it. So the other thing is it's just transparent. So anybody, I can't read it, and maybe you can't read it, but we can kind of trust the community of coders to look at it and make sure that as it gets audited, that there's no back doors, that that money's getting stolen. Um, and the beauty of it is it's is on these blockchains that are secure, they can store data and create apps. So you, a lot of like um, healthcare companies are using them, logistics companies. We know about finance, decentralized finance, uh, banks and stuff like that can store important data on there and know that it's secure. Yeah. I saw that the banks are trying to something to do with XRP. I don't know. So XRP is a coin that, so there's this company called Ripple, which is yeah. separate, but the, but XRP is a token. And it's a little bit different than Bitcoin, which is mined by the community and there can't be any replicas. XRP can be created. It can be inflated and deflated by the owner. Um, last I checked, and I haven't checked, it's not a decentralized Currency, even though they are using blockchain technology. Somebody told me it's an Illuminati coin. <laughs> I, it, was that me that told you that? It might have been. <laughs> yeah, I think it was you, actually. Yeah, so, I mean, that's the thing with that is XRP is, there's a lot of banks and dig bank names that are buying and involved within the tracking of currency with XRP. And so I was kind of against it for a while because it's not a decentralized cryptocurrency in the, you know, traditional. I mean, it's only been since 2010, but the traditional way. Um, but it's one of those things like if you can't beat him, 
join them, it's going to go up. So that's one of those coins I do own some because I know that they they're not going to let it die. So I want like five hundred of them. I want I might as well steal some money from them when when those pump. Yeah, because it, it's it kind of pumped this last week because I bought in at like fifty five cents each. Okay. And then I saw it went up to like 62 cents this last week. And I was like, oh, I didn't know that was going to move anytime soon. Yeah. I have I, a, I've seen I, people saying that it might go to a dollar by the end of the year. So that's something that they've been saying for quite some time. Uh, I would have a hard time believing that because you'd have to have the demand to push it to that point. You'd have to have the wallets in the 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 money that comes in there and with the and with the amount of currency out there too, so in order for something to go up in value, there has to be scarcity and then demand, obviously. So like Bitcoin is starting to get spread out, and a lot of people are owning that. The problem with XRP, or not the problem, the obstacle they would have raising the price is it's like only those conglomerates are really buying it, and then some people are sparingly buying it elsewhere. So you'd need the demand to go outward with the amount of coins that they have in order to push the, the demand up for the price to increase for to a thousand. Which yeah. I don't know. I, I don't I don't see that happening. Um that's basically blockchain the the beginning of blockchain. It's a decentralized uh, ledger yes. that tracks the money. Yes, on online. And you can look it up and you can go literally after you do a transaction, you can go to the BSC scans, the blockchain scans, and see your transaction on there and look it up, interact with it, and that's your code. So that brings me to the so that brings me to the transparency part, which is interesting. Is you can go on Twitter, right? And you could go to like Chase and you could see Chase putting out an ad that says Blockchain stinks. It's not the future. They're scammers. It's all crooks. Only crooks sold them or whatever. Then, because it's public rec record and it's transparency, you can go and you can go check the Chase wallet and you can see what transactions and you can be like, oh, that's interesting. They're saying this stinks and they just put $500,000 worth of Bitcoin into their wallet this week. So what is it, Chase? You're claiming this stinks, but also... Like we can see what you own on the wallet and there's money going in there. So you're lying to us. So if somebody were to steal, lie, cheat or whatever, the ledger is transparent. Now you can have and try to keep your wallet private. And there is cryptocurrencies that, and we can kind of get into this with the, this, bring us to the next one. It's called the trilemma or like th there's three, you know, uh, uh, which we'll call it. What's the word there? Lemma. Dilemmas. There's three dilemmas that it's trying to solve, which is security, stability, and decentralization. And uh, oh, scalability, security, and decentralization. And so far, they haven't figured out a blockchain that does all three at once. So for, exa for example, Bitcoin has security and it's decentralized, but they're having difficulty scaling it. And each block that lasted about 10 minutes, and I think it still lasts 10 minutes. I'm not really up on my Bitcoin tech anymore. It has to, every 10 minutes, they got to go through and, disc and, and do all those blocks. And they have to get in there, they get the code, they got to prove all this stuff on the ledger. And it's supposed to happen every 10 minutes. But if that block fills up because there's so many transactions, they go into the next block and so on and so forth. And so as that happens, now the price goes up to create a demand for things to work on that quicker, to incentivize people to go in there. So people pay higher fees in order to get the miners to come in to validate these contracts quicker, and they can't keep up with the demand. So for an example, I think Visa does one second transactions. Yeah, the blocks weren't fast enough with Bitcoin, so they were having a private problem scaling it. So along came this guy Roger Ver with, um, and please correct me in the comments if I'm an idiot. It's been a while since I've gone through. This is called the Idiot Investor Show. So 
he they you since it's open source and they're trying to vote to see which way the direction of this would go and they they came to an impasse they created what's called bitcoin cash and roger ver's idea was just increase the block size so this so they took the code and at that point where the fork happened anybody that owned bitcoin got equal amounts of bitcoin cash to their bitcoin and then it forked and the blockchains went in opposite directions and that from that point forward bitcoin kept the same roger Ver's bitcoin cash actually kept the white paper of going to but with bigger blocks and went this way and then how bitcoin solving their problem was what's called the lightning network which is a temporary ledger on top of the blockchain that records stuff and then it combines them if there's multiple users into one transaction to speed up the Bitcoin network or whatever. So anyways, the three problems is trying to solve is security, scalability, and decentralization. And so something like Ethereum has scalability and decentralization down pack, but people are finding sometimes there's issues with the security on that one. So when when we think about money right now, we think about fiat currency, we just think about like the dollar and that's all we know when you live in America, you use a dollar, maybe you go up to Canada, you get some loons, maybe you go down to Mexico and you get some pesos or maybe you travel, whatever. In the future, you'd have these digital businesses competing with one another, similar to how like, you know, if you use social media, are you on Twitter, are you on Facebook, are you on Instagram? If you use money, what money do you use and what do you use it for? So you might have uh, like Bitcoin gold that you hold on to, I mean, Bitcoin that you hold on for retirement, but every day because the gas fees are cheaper, you use Bitcoin cash to buy stuff on the internet or Litecoin to buy stuff on the internet because Litecoin is lighter, it's quicker, it's cheaper fees. And so as these problems get solved by different people, uh, you go to these different companies to use their blockchain technology uh to solve a different technical problem that you're having i'm not sure if i explained that properly does that make sense to you Dawn? no no <laughs> no <laughs> i don't right. understand any of this okay man. so i i kind of i kind of can wrap my head around it yeah ultimately it just it just sounds like another th another way that we fuck we just overcomplicated being alive all right. We just completely overcomplicated <laughs> existing to where, no, no, no. To, to where it's like now we're just like <laughs> we're, we're just like fucking around on computers and making stuff that's not real difficult. We're making stuff that doesn't exist and making it hard to be, to do. All right, so so this is why it's great that there's two of us here and that we can pull this back and forth off of one another. All right. So we backtrack. So you understand the ledger aspect of it, right? Yeah. All right. When you have that ledger, there's a risk that people could fake on that ledger and steal your money. And so you feel you're like, you. I have like, you know, a million dollars in Bitcoin and no one can take it. It's super secure. It's not in a bank. I don't have to worry about it. I just have a key or a cold wallet storage and I can get it. So the security aspect of it is having something that's ironclad, difficult, impossible, encrypted numbers that they can't steal your money. Does that make sense? That makes sense. That makes sense, yes. Okay. Next is scalability. Scalability is on that ledger being able to get enough transactions that it can handle the amount of people that are trying to use that technology at the time. And like I said, an example of Visa and MasterCard is I think they do one transaction a second. And Bitcoin's not anywhere near that. So if it was going to scale for the whole planet to use, um, we wouldn't be able to do that right now. It would be too slow. Those blocks would get backed up trying to encrypt. And eventually they would get backed up to the point where the fees would get so high that the whole thing would shut down. And you just have to wait for that to finish and people would have to use a, a competitor to 
uh, counterbalance it. So some people say the scalability part of it isn't an issue because the competition will take care of it. Like as the fees get too high in Bitcoin because the demand is high for a transaction, people will start using another currency. And as the, that gets too high, they go back to Bitcoin and there'll be an ebb and flow between different currencies. What are, what are people using any of this for? What are you <laughs> So you can buy a cup of coffee in Ecuador, don't. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I don't get. People talk about like I'm, I'm you. I'm, bu I'm buying shit with Bitcoin or whatever. I'm like, what happened to your cash? <laughs> you don't have well, cash. Here, so here's the thing. <clears throat> Shout out to Spritz Finance. I have a thing in my browser right here called Spritz. Uh, I don't want to open it up because um, I'm not sure how much personal information is in there. But basically, it allows me to take my crypto, put it in my Spritz wallet, click on a MasterCard, Visa, bank account, whatever I want that money to go, and take my crypto and pay my credit card, pay my utility bill, my gas bill, whatever I need to pay right from my computer, from the wallet, with the earnings that I'm making from the cryptocurrency without having to ever deposit into my Chase Bank account or into my Bank of America, or whatever. So you can spend it on everyday things with the new systems that are being set up. So that's what people are. People, I'm working to get my life set up that all my money is digital like that, and all my bills are paid digital. I, like I that. heard that now. Yes, I guess I've heard people say talk about this. Like I was talking to some guys the other night that said um, they only have like they were like I only got like two digits in my bank account. I'm <laughs> done with banks. Yeah. Everything is crypto now. Yeah. So I, in that way, I mean, I, yeah, I guess it, it, it can function as a currency. But have we really seen? Is that is that the attitude? Because it doesn't seem like that's the way it behaves. Like a lot of people treat it like almost yeah. like stocks, where they go, "I'm going to buy a certain amount of Bitcoin, yeah, so that I can get rich off of Bitcoin." Mm -hmm. You know, I could sell it later and then get a bunch of money, dollars, yeah, and be a Bitcoin like the Winklevoss well, twins or Bitcoin billionaires now. Yes, but I could say the same thing about fiat currency too. So there's a bunch of lunatics out there that have been doing that since the dawn of time, like the billionaires that are got a billion fiat currencies and all these properties that they own and this rental income. Well, yeah, I mean, people so, do that now. I, yeah, I mean, that's like investing, like people. Like buy property, yeah. not to actually have property, but just so it'll increase in value, and then they can sell it or whatever. Like they treat every, they treat like necessities are investments. Yeah. You know. So, um, so a meme coin basically is just a social coin, and most of the time it doesn't have any utility behind it. It's yeah. just the value that people give to it. So I think a lot of people get confused. On the blockchain, though, you can have a full business running on a blockchain in an app with the utility working behind the scenes on stuff where like Cardano, for instance, I believe. And again, Idiot Investor Show, do your own research. This is not financial advice. I believe they're working with smart contracts with hospitals and the medical industry so they can put everybody's medical stuff on there so as you switch from hospital to hospital doctor to doctor you can get the people's encrypted data online on the blockchain and look at it so that's the service that they're giving and the coin that's attached to it into those things is kind of like the stock the digital stock so as people put money in there the people got into the owners that printed the coin originally printed some for themselves and their business or whatever, and they should be managing that properly so that they can invest that, reinvest that in the business. And then the, as they do, they should be putting back and forth in, into the business like a, uh, uh, like a stock, which would generate ups and ebb and flows, ups and downs in the, the amount of capital that's needed for those particular businesses. So when you look at this stuff, uh, it's called a utility. You have to, you, you don't have to, but you should be going to the website and looking for what's called a white paper. And that explains what problem or obstacle the service or technology solves uh, 
for an individual. For example, NFTs, when we had Bored Apes and everything recently and the Paul brothers and everybody was buying these cartoon apes and they were worth millions and they thought they're gonna keep going up and so on. No one knew what was going on. Those were all memes. Cartoon apes is what I call the proud family. <laughs> Folks, this is not that type of show. I do. I have to go to the other channel if you want me to get that type of humor. For me. Wait, wait, hold on. <laughs> All right. So, so when you go to, uh, <laughs> so, I'm so distracted now. Um, where is I going? Oh, so, but if you start thinking about an NFT like a deed to a property so say you bought a a car uh from ford and when you purchase that car you got an nft that you were the owner of that deed that car and so when they tracked it they could say okay here's ford's blockchain here's the nft it was traded to dalton pruitt and then you have that nft in your wallet which proves that you own that car or you would have an NFT for your insurance, like you paid insurance on that card. It's in there. So you would. So if you didn't carry it on you, and you're like, "Look, I'm telling you, this is my car. I own it. Check the, uh, you know, check the NFTs. All your data would be stored. The car ownership, whatever. So then, if somebody stole your car and they tried to sell it, they'd be like, "Well, where's the NFT?" And they wouldn't be able to steal it off the blockchain. So it would have to create like a, you know, a black market of these cars being like stolen or whatever. You'd be able to keep your, your insurance card on that. And when you sold that card, they would put the money into your smart contract and then you would give them the NFT, right? So you wouldn't even need like a third party to protect it. The computer contract would do it. The, it would be like same time, same time. They put the money in and because the money's in there, what you requested, the NFT transfers to them, the car transfers to them. Then if you kept driving the car and didn't actually give them the physical property, they could go to the cops and be like, look, I own this NFT. Here's the transfer of deed. It's on the blockchain. It's decentralized and protected. It's secured. He needs to hand the keys over, the actual keys over to me. So that's the utility of something like that in the future is, and you can't lose it in a fire. You don't have to put it in a safety deposit box. It's all protected on the uh the decentralized blockchain computers this, is, is, this does make sense i'm starting yeah. to get it it's going to take a long time for yes. this to be adopted so what i'm saying is so what i'm saying is if you believe that that could happen for our kids kids right and yeah. you own some of the tokens that we're going to do that and you're this ahead of it then that's a pretty good investment. It'd be like being able to buy part of the internet. That's another thing. So like your YouTube channel right now is owned by YouTube. Imagine being able to turn your podcast and your videos into an NFT. And every time someone watches them, you get a small transactional fee. And if somebody puts them on their website, you get a small fee. And then you can take that wallet and give it to your kids and your grandkids. And they get a small fee every time that that's watched. Or you could right. sell the rights to it. And that way they couldn't just steal it and make money off of you. You'd have a way to protect your art and your contract if you wanted to. If you wanted to protect the intellectual property, you could. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. You know, still sounds like a bunch of hocus pocus. <laughs> it 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 is hard to it really is hard to visualize because like But that's the thing with finance across the board is yeah. none of it makes sense. I've, I've, um, you, you ever seen the movie trading places? Yeah. With Eddie Murphy and Dan Eddie Aykroyd. Murphy and Dan Aykroyd. It was about the like stock market in the eighties. Yeah. Uh, with like great, a great, uh, movie. great, Oh, incredible movie. Yeah. I couldn't tell, but that that's a movie about finance that, and I've, I've had this conversation with a number of people that there's a lot of people who have no clue what's going on in that movie. Like what the actual scheme is and what's that what's happening in regards to like their financial scheme. Yeah. It like whatever whatever's going on with the stock market in that movie and how the money works, 
there's a lot of people who go funny movie, no clue. <laughs> I have no idea what happened in that yeah. movie. And I'm the same, I'm the same way. Like whenever I see anything about finance, like whether it's that movie or these stories in the news about like Bernie Madoff or, or any of this stuff, I'm like, no, I like you, you know, what you just did now. And anytime I hear about money stuff, I'm like, I, I think I get the rudiments of this. But then ultimately, I've no. This is such an enigma. This is a labyrinth. I have no fucking yeah. clue. Un- the, un- understandable. Some of it, whether could it's be... crypto, whether it's crypto or f- fiat currency, yeah. <laughs> it still it still all seems designed in a way that I, I I don't know why they you you have to like the the people who made it get to understand it, and then everyone else doesn't so yeah so part of the reason i wanted to try to meet with you is because had you not been here just to throw stuff back and forth i would have seen this as for me this is a lot easier to understand so it's good to have somebody that's you know trying to learn it and it's similar to um the way i always kind of look at it is like i grew up on a dos computer and so I would put a, a, an actual floppy disk into my computer and I would hit C drive and I would hit run or I'd hit play and the video game would pop up and I put commands in and I'd be like, you know, I hit the arrow, go to the next screen. I'd like look in the well, blah, blah, blah. And I actually had like type commands in. Yeah. And then they built the layer one onto that, which is like windows. So this is still on DOS. And then now like uh, I see these videos online, like, um, I don't know if you, have you ever watched the videos of the kid whose father worked for Blizzard and he works, he used to work for Blizzard. He's got like long hair and he's like a tech guy. He makes games. No. Well, he was just talking about that. He was at a recent um, like video game uh, thing where they walk around and he had a uh, keyboard and controllers and uh, two monitors for people to play the game. And so he got there in the morning and and everybody just kept picking up the controller. So he was like, oh, like they don't get the 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 keyboard anymore. So I gotta take that away. So he put up two uh controllers and then a little kid walked up and started touching the screen. And so oh, wow. it's like <laughs> so it's like wow, mind blown. So it's like those kids that, you know, th- that's like three levels on top of their phone that they're dealing with, but it's super easy. They're just pushing their finger. So I think ev- ev- eventually the blockchain will be simplified for individuals with layers. And they have them right now. They'll have a chain and they'll have a layer one, a layer two, layer three. These platforms that are on top that make it easier and easier for people to use. Yeah, because that's it becomes how I got it. very easy to, and then you'll still have people like when I try to show my mother how to turn a ru- Ruku on and watch a show, she's like, can't right do it. That, so that's how like, I discovered. I guess this was my introduction into any sort of investing in finance was when I I had I had a min, my mental break when I was going crazy. I um it was like two years ago or however long ago it was at this point i downloaded the crypto.com app yeah. which is very hey, simple a little on there <laughs> you well know, i mean i yeah i got like yeah. some bitcoin and ethereum or whatever and yeah. just like you know and so it's all very simplified on there because it's an exchange so i don't have to like basically i'm using the app as like a bank for my crypto i don't yes. have to be my i don't have to manage it myself which you've told me is the risk in crypto is like, if you leave it on the exchange like that, you, there is like some risk there. So that like the hardcore crypto guys want to pull their shit off the exchange and put it on a wallet. Yes, because they're storing it in their wallet. So they technically own it. So if they wanted to keep it, they could, or like with Robin hood, when AMC stock was getting pumped, and people are like, you know, let's hold, let's try to sell, let's get our millions out. Robinhood just 
bent the knee to the hedge funds and locked everybody out of their accounts and you know what i mean so no one yeah. could actually get at their thing i think so, i think like with that people can still sell i think they stop it from you being able to buy it yeah so it, it's an individual choice basically it goes back to what we we're talking about with decentralization versus security so if you want less security but you don't have to worry about the security, so you hand that over to a third party, right? Like Mt. Gox, Gox, which was the magic card company that got into crypto, and now they're paying people back. They got uh, hacked, uh, probably an inside job because they would need the keys or somebody put them on a server live and somebody found them. So What's you would the take the company? Mt. Gox, G-O-X. Mt. Go Gox Tua? Yeah, Marco Gox tour. So they used to be in magic cards and then they opened up uh I mean, this is going way back. So I, I I was like in crypto when this is all happening. So again, idiot investor, so if I'm misremembering, but they recently started paying people back. But uh if it because it, it was centralized. So an exchange is an exchange is just that. If you need a coin and you need to exchange it. Um, and then they have decentralized exchange, which is called a DEX, which is what I work with to do. I lend money to them so other people can make these trades and no one person is holding it. It's put into these smart contracts. Um, and that way you're, you're still risk because you're not holding it. It's not secure. It's in a third party place. Um, but you can still get it at it yourself, so you're not beholden. So it, that it's just a personal choice. You got to figure out how much security you want versus how much difficulty you want. Um, even with layers, for instance, there's a site called Uniswap, which has these pools. And if you buy in their pools, you need to buy equal amounts of each coin and put them in each pool to watch them. But there's a, a layer called Beefy. And if you go to Beefy, Beefy built an app on top of Uniswap where they basically had an easier function. And for a small fee, you hit a couple of buttons. It transfers all the coins for you. It puts them in Uniswap on your behalf. You can see it on their interface. And then for a small fee, you can take the money out on Beefy. So sometimes I just use Beefy because it's easier. Other times I like to go directly to the decentralized exchange. Uh, but people that were just starting off would probably start on a site like Beefy Finance because it's a very user-friendly experience um, of crypto. So there is people that are problem-solving this that know more about it than than you, than you or I. Right. Yeah, yeah. it's going to take a couple generations for this yes. to be done. Because, I mean, there's like, dude, I mean, I, you know, I work sales in my day job. There is a surprising number of people still around <laughs> that don't even have email addresses. Yes. Yeah. So you can't possibly ever expect them to begin to wrap their heads around any of this and adopt this in any meaningful way. And so if, if they if there's like a, a significant portion of the population that still doesn't even have an email, like just yeah. doesn't even understand the way the world has worked for the last 30 years, then that means there's you know, an even more, a larger portion of the population that would just, it just had, the, the, this is, I don't even, I don't really know what you're saying to me for the last hour. This is my, you might as well be speaking Chinese. <laughs> well, that's why we're here. So it's like, cause I understand, like I do, I do D gen stock st uh, yeah. gambling. So I understand open Robin hood, find yeah. a ticker. It's a penny, you know, it's a micro cap penny stock. Put right. a bunch of money into it, lose that money. That's what I do. <laughs> that's how I invest. Yeah. That's, yeah, yeah. that's how I manage my finances. I understand that. Because there's a company that's actually like building, you know, robots. They're trading at 13 cents a share. I buy at yeah. 13. It goes to 40 cents. I still don't sell. It drops to eight. They do a reverse split. Yeah. Now it's worth 360 a share, but I have less shares and it's still dropping in price. I'm losing more money. Should have sold when it went from 13 to 40 cents. I get that. 
So you can you know, do similar stuff like that with crypto once you this is the, this is the basics of it. This is the underlying stuff. You can get into stuff and not know about this aspect of it. But then your mind really does become this is just gambling. If you know yeah. the underlying works, um, then when you research I follow some stuff, of those accounts on Twitter, like those like uh what do they call those like Romilio guys? Have you seen that? No, maybe. Do you know about Romilio? Oh man, maybe this is my chance to teach you about because this is like Romilio. I, I don't even know how I found this shit. There's like these these insane accounts on uh Twitter that's like um R- like Romilio, whatever. I have to look it up, but it's like Neo Neo, Neo Chibi PFP NFTs. Expand, expanding the Milady Maker paradigm with the introduction of young JIT energy. I don't know what any of this means. What can I put it? I'll put it in. What's it, what's the handle on Twitter? It's it's not necessarily one handle. It's like a community. Okay. And it's Rem, Remilio. How do I spell R- that? R E M I L I O, and it's like a crypto community of some something. I don't know what's going on. I say, you know, some of those, I follow some of those accounts. I don't know why I start following, but they, those are like DJ and crypto people that I talk about so. how, like, they always, from what I've seen, they seem to share this idea that, like, money's not real. Fucking you just like gamble with your uh, crypto. Oh, that thing's and, scary looking. Yeah, I don't know. I'll, this, maybe this is something I'll have to research for next time because it is like a, one of the more insane uh, rabbit holes I've, I'm putting it. Yeah, you see it the the cheap the cartoon, yeah, with the big eyes. So I remember this was something I put it into Gronk, and it said the answer is this is meant to be Remilio. Sounds like a cool name for a futuristic robot sidekick, robot body. But I remember there being that monster that they told the kids. They would find it on the internet to creep them out, but I didn't know it was a part of a crypto community or whatever. Yeah, it's like these um, cartoon profile pictures. Um, that from what I've seen, the accounts I've seen are very racist. Yeah, and also seem to do like crypto road pool schemes and scams, like pump yes. and dump. So that kind of brings me to my next my next thing here not the not the racial aspect of it, but these decentralized apps called dapps um so we have there's like jupiter right isn't that one it it probably is like the what where you would the stuff cuz this is the stuff i like the stuff they talk about where it's like you would you 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 own like a certain amount of solana yeah, and then you go into this other thing and trade, and then you know, convert your you buy you use your Solana to get like a some something else like okay. a, like a different meme coin or whatever. But you can't you don't you can't access these different Solana based meme coins on the like regular exchanges. Oh, okay, so yeah, so like a lot of these, no, so that's a decentralized. So a lot of times when these coins come up and they first start, they have to build their reputation. So when you start a coin like Dogecoin or Pepe or whatever, you would probably have a website with the smart contract on there and you would have to go to the website. They would have a wallet on their site that had all the Pepe they created in it. And you would give them Bitcoin or whatever and transfer it in there through a smart contract. And their end wallet would get you are Bitcoin, Ethereum, or whatever you spent, and then they would give you Pepe. And so you're basically giving them actual something that people are trading on exchanges for a risky coin that they've created. And they could just take your money and disappear. They, yeah. you know what I mean, if you haven't researched the contract, it hasn't been audited. So what they then do is they go to exchanges that have a reputation and say, hey, I have – This coin, it's a meme coin, but we have this community and here's this, this, and this. And then maybe crypto.com puts it on there. And then 
they go to the next exchange, say, look, crypto.com has us on here. And they go to eToro and eToro puts it on there. And they keep doing that until they build a reputation where you can get it on other exchanges. Like you can buy Shiba, I think, and Doge on Gemini. And Gemini is pretty strict with the coins, or they were for a while, of which ones you can buy. But I, And I think maybe you can buy Pepe on there now. So uh, even the building a reputation to get this stuff is done uh, decentr decentralized. But you're probably finding these meme coins really early, and you have to go to like a really shady low-end exchange with a bad reputation that will hold the coin there. Yeah, because that, that yeah. there was one because I haven't looked into too many, but there was one a few months back that came out called E Girl. Okay. And it was it was like a uh not necessarily a red scare. Really point. you really get your ear to the to the rails of the, of the online <laughs> community there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's not necessarily like a red scare coin, but it's like it was a coin that was based on that kind of woman, like a yeah, like a Dasha type. So yeah. it was like the idea was it was like a community of like, I don't know, like r retarded skinny girls. <laughs> I don't know, okay. dude. Yeah. But yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I try and it was like pumping. There were people making like good money on it. So, so these like, e-girls are getting pumped. I'm, I'm with you. The e-girls <laughs> are getting pumped. Yeah. And yeah. so I, I I was looking in. I was like, what this is, is this? This is not financial advice, ladies. This is not financial advice. But I, I went to the e-girl website to try and figure out like what this is. Yeah, and I was immediately lost because they were like, "You got to download, you got to get Coinbase, and then you got to get like Phantom Wallet." And then they did; they didn't even like give you all the instructions. It, it was like playing into the e girl thing, where it's like, and then find a boy to do the rest for you. Yeah, so, so I was like, I how's have, anyone figuring this? Out? I don't know so why. That was, we're... So I have so I'll share the screen here. So I, it's funny they brought that up because this week was the basics, and I still got a couple sections here. But I have for next week's episode, I was. I was thinking that we need to do um, – I got wallets and exchanges. So there's different – it's called Web3. And like right now, if I were to go up here to this thing, this is the MetaMask. Yeah. And, yeah, I've got that app. Okay, and that's connected in – man, I, uh, I really don't want to log in. Yeah, don't, on, don't on do screen. that. I don't want to log in on screen because I'm not sure if it shows the, the keys or whatever. Yeah, probably it might. But basically, you yeah, 4chan will get on here and they'll and they'll know where my fingers are placed and they'll copy. A anyways, I have mine. You can take that MetaMask and you can put your seed phrase on a on a cold wallet here. I have it on a nano a ledger nano X. So it has to plug in anyways. But you would have to pick one of those wallets. Crypto.com has its own wallet. Uh, uh, there's di there's different ones, Phantom. So that that's something we can go through in the future as well. And the Web3 is a way to connect with that. So uh, how, how would we think about this? So imagine you're on Twitter, right? And instead of Twitter being a regular web site, it was a Web3 account which means instead of logging in to your account using your email and your password, you when you get to the site, you click your wallet on there and it's signed in. And based on that wallet, it gave you an avatar because it knew what's associated with that wallet. And that avatar you could choose. It could be an NFT that you want to share or a picture you draw. It could be a picture. It could be whatever you whatever you want. But now you're also connected financially. So if you were interacting with people, you could either buy stuff from their page, buy merchandise, or get paid. So if Elon wanted to make Twitter Web3 with Dogecoin. Which, I, yeah, I've heard he wants to do that. Then Twitter would be one of the utilities for Dogecoin would be the Twitter community. And then instead of paying you in cash, he would pay you in Dogecoin. And then you could tip creators in, in Dogecoin too if you were getting paid. Um, and then if you sent your Dogecoin to the Spritz Finance, you could pay your actual bills and stuff in it. So rather than 
and the and the fees for those are minimal. It's pennies. It's like point zero 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 one Doge and gas fees, or whatever. But they add up compared to now. Like if you use PayPal, they take like you know two point five percent sometimes when when people send you money or whatever. If you want to get uh, a transfer that way, yeah. Um, so that's a scam from Superman three and Office Space. <laughs> Remember that? Oh yeah, it's taking yeah, it's taking those small fees from yeah, Office Space. Yeah, yeah. Richard Pro. Well, in Superman three, because the joke in Office Space is that he's like, I got it from Superman three. Okay. So in, you have to go back to Superman three to figure out what he means by that. So in Superman three, Richard Pryor, his character, uh, did, oh does my not, god, yes, I just remember. Yeah, you remember? I, he's, he's, I do remember this. Now. He's an un, he's at the unemployment line. He and he gets a job doing like data entry or whatever, and then just discovers that he's actually a computer genius. He just has like some, <laughs> <laughs> some natural knack for computers, having like never re- even used one. Yeah, and so then he's able to he's he's able to somehow cook up this scheme, this scheme, the scam, where there's all these transactions happening, and then he's skimming that fraction of a penny off of each yeah. transaction, and then just you know becomes a millionaire. That's basically DeFi. You just you just figured out DeFi. <laughs> so Superman DeFi 3. is Superman three, also <laughs> Office Space. Yes, but everybody knows that you were doing it and you know that you're doing it and they're they're welcoming you doing it rather than pay the bank so like when you go to when you go to the credit card when you pay for your credit with a credit card in store there's a fee that fee normally goes into your price of your whatever you purchase and it gets yeah. divided out and then you know, Visa and MasterCard or whatever make all that money and the fees from the stores, but it gets it gets worked into the price of the food and, and products that you purchase. Yeah, some places with you know, DeFi, you, you're just you getting more. you're getting that fee, or you're sharing part of that fee of the pool of whoever has money in that pool. You're all splitting that those fees, and they can get. Let me see if I can. Let me pull up Beefy. Because this is an easy one to to understand and look at. And let me do it in a way. Okay, so let me pull this up here. So this is Beefy Finance, where I'm earning some fees. And I don't know how well you can see it on the screen here, but if you look right over here, uh, see this says TVL. So the coin that I have is OVN, and USD Plus is a second stable coin that OVN is linked to up here. If you look over here, this is called the base chain, and that's the that's the off ramp kind of from Ethereum, which is the Ethereum blockchain. It's called base. Um, there's all new ones coming up. There's um, um, there's Ethereum. There's Arbitron. There's Linea. There's uh, base. Basically, it's just companies that are building a cheap off ramp from this expensive highway, so that you can get to 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 stores like this in a cheaper fashion. So they're holding a bunch of Ethereum, and then rather than trading in and paying a lot of fees, you get a little bit of it in a wrapped ETH on this chain, and then it costs you pennies to borrow their ETH from them. But anyways, this one on the main site, which is uh, Aerodrome, there's 25, uh, 25 million locked up. Can you see that on the screen? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I see that. So that 25 million is on the main platform, Aerodrome. And you can go to the Aerodrome website and do this too. I'm just happy to do it on Beefy because it's easier. This 6.6 million is how much is locked up on just Beefy. 
that's beefy is on part of and locked with the Therodrome. And what that's doing is that total value locks kind of showing me how many other people are in that. So the lower that number it is, the riskier and the more degen <clears throat> is. The higher that number, the more stable it is. Um, now, if you look at here, I'm getting 923% interest on my money. And if you look down here, I have, I put 1952 into this and it's turned into $2,116. And 86 of that is fees, but I made 164. So part of this, so 86 was fees and the additional uh, 86 is profit and loss from this, this 8.4% is how much the actual asset OVN has gone up since I've owned it. So this chart kind of shows that the price has been increasing. So not only am I making fees on it, the asset that I own is going up in value as well. Um, why did I get into this on Beefy? Oh, because this is the the overlay of everything. This is like a, um, a layer on top of it. This this is a service to allow people borrow money because Ethereum is expensive to trade. So base is a service that allows you to get cheaper, get wrapped Ethereum, which is a token that's proving that somebody owned has Ethereum and they're letting you borrow it as if it's theirs. This is the actual exchange that people are using to do that and get a fee. And then this is another company that's on top of that, that's taking a small fee to make it easier for me, kind of like, I don't know, like, like your cell phone, like your, the screen on your cell phone. So it's easy to make, you hit these numbers, but really it's, it's connecting to this huge, uh, infrastructure that's going out there and calling somebody. Um, I guess why I brought this up was just to show you like the, if, if somebody needs OVN for the OVN project and they need to trade some of the stock, buy it or get out of it, there needs to be some online. And this has so much value in it currently that this one site it's got $25 million of it locked up. So you don't have to be super intelligent, like dive deep into OVN to figure it out. You can just see, okay, well, there's 25 million other morons plus that are in this too. So this is going to be somewhat stable of a, of a project. So when we're getting caught up in the weeds of understanding everything earlier, that was so you would have a basic uh, like understanding, but you can do stuff a little bit outside of those uh, parameters by using common sense, I guess, without right. getting too technical. Uh, but anyways, those things that we just saw there was a decentralized aerodrome is a decentralized exchange. And when I put my money in there and it's giving me an interest rate, it's not a person punching it in. They have what's called a smart contract on the blockchain, which is a list of parameters and that are like yes or no commands with a, with a computer. So it's like we have this pool of money and he put X amount in. If this happens to that pool, then execute X amount of money into his allotted fund and it's all done via coding so that's what's called a smart contract so it's not like hey you're supposed to give me interest why didn't you put interest into my bank into my bank account like you're asking a human to do it and then they say oh i know i said five but i'm going to give you three mm -hmm. once you're locked into that smart contract it's called a, a, a mutable which means it can't be changed um so there's immutable in, uh, forget what the immutable and I guess changeable, mutable, immutable, immutable. I don't know what the opposite of immutable is. There is contracts that can be changed, but most smart contracts can't be changed. 
So when I put that money in there, I know that it's not a human that's making the with emotions that's making it. It's that technology that's been coding in there that's going to be dripping that funds into my. So I have this security knowing that the smart contract uh, is is going to be handing that those interest points out to me. Did I lose you again? Oh yeah, long okay. time ago. <laughs> Well, you can tell me to shut up. You can tell me to shut up. I uh, know I'm. I'm, I'm paying. Uh, it t- I'm trying to follow this. I know you had a long day at work. For those that don't know, Dalton's got um, two podcasts. Maybe this third one. Here. I've got. I've got. And he just finished work at 10 p.m. And we've almost. We're an hour 20 in here. So yeah, we need he's to. Doing really we, good. If we uh, we got well, we got a stream from my channel, so that I can talk to the chat. Keeps me alive, and they give me money. Um, so yeah, so we can stream in the future if that would be if that would be easier, and I can put the the syllabus up on like a uh, a screen first, and we could also stop it here. I thought that we would go through the basics. Well, but... let me let me uh here because I think yes, we because I'm already lost. That's fine. So I because I've gotten up to decentralized applications. <laughs> I still wanted to go over. Coins, tokens, and stable coins, which I think you would get pretty well. Gas fees, and then just basic terms here. Those yeah. are what I had left. Yeah, we can. I mean, we can continue all that next next time. Okay. Because I gotta figure. I gotta like research this stuff. I got. I don't even. This, none of this makes sense. Let me show. Hey, but here, let me show you some. Let me. Let's get in some DJ and shit that I've been in on. All right, so yeah, so let's pa- pause this stuff here. Um, I'm not. I'm going to keep recording this, and you can show me. You can share. Your, how do I get you to share your screen? I can do it right here, dude. Okay, perfect. So, so, to, so, I put this up on my website, so you guys can follow along. We're going to stop it here um, on these applications. I'm happy that there's two of us here because this makes me slow down and understand what somebody's going through that's trying to learn this because some, once you know this stuff sometimes you rush through so i'm really happy that that, that we did this oh yeah, yeah. You definitely, i probably should have interjected a number of times yeah because there were so many things you said you just said i don't uh i don't know i don't understand any of what you said. So, <laughs> all right no that's fine so i i that, that's great. So I want to put these up on the website, like I said, and so people can go through them. And then we'll start off next time we do this, and we'll just go through coins, gas fees, and cryptos, uh, some of the crypto terms. And in the meantime, we'll go over and we're going to do – we're about an hour and 22 minutes deep. So why don't we do Dalton's GGN Play of the yeah. Week? Let's get it. Yeah, let's get it. It's not financial advice. This is the shit I've been in on. This is what got people. This is what got people uh, interested in my journey into finance. (laughs) This is what they. um, If I mean honestly, me doing me publicly fumbling through this has helped make people make uh, like thousands of dollars. Really, following there were people who followed my tips and played them the right way and made money when I lost money on. Stuff that I was talking about, yeah. Uh, so yeah, because I don't know what I'm doing, uh, because I'm not an expert, this is not financial advice, but um, this is the this is the one that's got a lot of buzz right now. This is some real DGN uh behavior because these uh, like these micro cap stocks, <clears throat> anything trading under a dollar is you want me to show not, this on screen for you? Is what it not? You? Is it not showing up? I can see it. It's queued. I just have to hit the button to show on on screen. Oh, yeah. Throw it up. Go ahead and throw that up. I just didn't want to do it if it had personal information. No, no. This is just a tab. I just pulled up the ticker because this is the ticker I've been in on. Gotcha. Uh, This is what people are – there's a lot of buzz right now. They're saying that this could have an FFIE-type run, which is the last short squeeze that happened was that dumbass electric vehicle company. Uh, this is a solar company. There's a lot of like talk about solar coming back in a big way. Yeah, I've heard uh, that. Yeah, so there's a lot of solar companies that are getting some buzz right now. Um, and this is one of them. This is Maxion Solar Technologies based out of, uh, I think they're in Singapore or something. <clears throat> um, 
but th there's a, a lot of people online trying to retail investors, dumb money as, as they're called trying to do, trying to initiate a short squeeze on this one. Cause it's like heavily shorted by these hedge funds, mm -hmm. but it's also got like, there's some weird institutional investing happening with it where like BlackRock owns a big stake in it. Like a bunch of these big institutions have invested in this company. So I, I don't know what's, it, it can't, I, I've been like losing my mind all week because this is my last like Hail Mary attempt at trying to make this work is this solar company that I, this Chinese solar company. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I mean, it's just be hilarious. So if, if you were to, if you, you end up making like, like $10 million on this, and then, like you, you pull it, pull it out. And you're just like driving a Lambo around. People are like, "Where'd you make all your money?" And you're like, "Well, I invested in Chinese solar." Companies. I invested in Chi yeah, Chinese solar company. Um, yeah, because I was heavily uh, invested in Chinese solar companies back in uh, 2024. That's where I made a bunch of my money. Some I have I have a few solar TikTokers. You know how those TikTokers come up to people in the. In the car, and they're like, "Oh, oh yeah. you make all your money," and then you take it as like whatever the person says. You just believe them. Oh <laughs> yeah. Know? Well, yeah. Did you see that, that one where that, that it was like some black guy in a Rick and Morty shirt that <laughs> just beautifully rattled off some of the best lies ever? Like oh. he, he was, he was like, "Yeah, you know, um, I invested early in the Snapchat. I was in the first seed round on Snapchat." Yeah. And the guy was like, "What was your initial investment?" He goes, "Uh, sixty nine." <laughs> <laughs> just like bullshit yeah um yeah i know what you're talking about i can reshare that screen I, uh, that's good that was just like the do you have permission finance. to do it out of curiosity on, on um, the left hand side is there um no you have because you're hosting okay. so you have to yeah do. that's I mean, fine that's i was just gonna show because like the, all week it's been like where it is now. It's at like twenty one cents a share. It's just been sitting. It's been like moving, kind of sideways for the last like several days. Because yeah. my my average buy in is point two one two eight, <clears throat> and last week it jumped to like thirty, which was a would be a good return if you were smart. <laughs> you could sell then and move on to the next thing. But I held, and then it dropped down like. You could see here even today it dropped down to 20. So it's been hovering in between like 19 and 30 cents, but really mostly it's just like between 19 and 22 cents. And what so is it? M A X N? M A X N is the ticker, folks. It's not financial advice. But um, the, uh, what I've been reading is that it's primed for. And that's on the NASDAQ? That is, it is on the NASDAQ. But here's the thing. And I didn't know this when I started doing all this that these uh, all these micro cap stocks here. I'm stop sharing it now. I was just showing. Like, so I'm just pulling it up chart. here on. I'm just pulling it up here on Trade View. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Oh, yeah. These are those those charts where people draw the yeah pendants and, and bolt cup and handle and whatever people are talking about. Yeah. Um, so unlike crypto that runs twenty four seven, I was just remembering like all the the market's closed right now, so there's no actual like it yeah, closed, it closed at at, at twenty one cents today. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, and it scared me today because it had it. Somebody dumped it. Uh, and it yeah, there's a big. Yeah, I don't know what this means, but there's a huge gap right here. Yeah. There's so those are gaps, which is like. I think that's where there's like a big dump that happens. Yeah. Like some something happens where it just drops significantly in price. And so now there has to be like a gap fill. So like this is what this is like the shit that everybody that follows like understands this talks about where they're like, we need it to go to at least 26. And then when it's at 26, that'll be the resistance level. They're yeah. gonna probably push it back down to 22. And from 22, we can get, you know, and it's like. So I know a little bit about that. So I don't know how I would chart this because I normally chart cryptos. But, yeah, you can just basically take a, a horizontal line usually. But with this, it looks like they'd have to be trend lines. And so, like, if you were to draw a trend line on this from, say, the green, 
you would you would try to get a couple of greens here and see where it's going to go. So say you charted those two outward this way. I don't know anything about this. This would be your the line they think. So anything that hits the bottom of this is meeting, um, you know, you're getting re either resistance if it's going up or when it's here and it's hitting the line there, it's getting resistance on the way down. So they're charting it basically saying, okay, if you were charting it for starting here and it was going down and then it comes back up, they're assuming that it's going to hit this 237 mark. And then when it hits that, they're assuming that it's going to hit that resistance and you either come back down and it's time to sell. Or if it breaks through, then a new chart starts and they think that it's going to be like a, a run up upward. Or at least yeah. that's what they do in the, in the crypto stuff. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Crypto follows like similar trends. Like it's all... It seems like crypto does have its origins in, you know, the fine the the money we've been using. Yeah. Um, yeah. So everybody's saying there's 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 a lot of apes on this one, a lot of bag holders, some diamond hands, <laughs> and, <laughs> and and I have seen like actual like websites like these stock prediction websites have like. Uh, conservative price targets at like three dollars, and then more, you know, um, liberal so, price targets. So let me pull have... this up again. So here's a horizontal line. So they're saying three dollars. So that would be that would be a three dollar rise. Yeah. So yeah, I've seen I've seen some price targets at like three, and I've seen some say like eight. Dollars, yeah, but I don't know, you know, and it, and it closed today at 21 cents. <laughs> closed today at 21 cents, yeah. So, it, so it this closed is today, way, way. I mean, I can't even get it on the, the chart, yeah. But the funny thing is, so let's just say this is four, this is 50 cents, yeah. So <laughs> you can then hold on. So then I would go in here and I would go a price range. You can click it on here. Let's do it in this big open space. That would be a 519% increase from yes. 50 cents up to three bucks. Okay. Yeah. But it, but it, that That is insane. But here's yeah. the thing. This is happening regularly on the stock market. Yeah. You're having yeah, yeah. You just never know which one it's going to be. Like there's all these different tickets. Like the other day, this electric vehicle company I never heard of called Zap ran mm -hmm. from 75 cents. It was at 75 cents in June. And then it got up to like a dollar or something and then ran to $20 that day. Yeah. And so anyone they've been holding it made out with tons of money. If they were able and to it, sell. Yeah. If they caught it. Yeah. yeah. And, Cause so I mean, I those, got moves, in, those moves, those moves really so early fast. to Shiba Uno. And everybody's, yeah, so I had a bunch of those in Shiba Uno and it spiked up. And this is how I learned this. And I woke up in the morning and I was like dancing around in my underwear because I thought I was a millionaire. Yeah. But there was nobody to buy it. So I was like, oh, wait, like no one can buy this. Like I crashed. There was so few people in it that I would have crashed my own price getting out. And there was nobody to, to buy the shares. So it was a false demand being generated by the computer, basically. So oh, I'm not, yeah. I'm just saying this is an extreme with a crypto pump meme coin. So, but it's similar to the stock market because when it goes up that high, you still have to be able to sell your shares to somebody, which is beautiful with the squeeze because the hedge funds have to buy them. They're forced to with the stock pay exchange, short. Yeah. With the stock exchange, if you click the sell button and hit sell, it sells. Like you don't like the like it's all well, however the exchange works, you can always sell whatever you have. Okay. So that's why that's why the the GameStop thing, so many people were able to get rich off of that because the way the game is set up that you know if game if, if somebody buys in at GameStop at three and it jumps to three hundred, anyone that did that, yeah, when they click sell, I mean they the somebody has to buy it. like they have to be able to sell. Well, it. well, in the squeeze, 
and the hedge fund shorting them, they made a promise that they would buy. Yes. So they had to buy those up because they had those promissory papers. When I'm on like um, Gemini Exchange, for instance, and I want to buy Bitcoin Cash or I want to sell it, the bids are in and you can see where the bids are, where people are at up and down. There actually has to be somebody else that wants to purchase it in order for you to make the trade. So like you put a sell order in and it could sit there. Sometimes it's instantaneously and sometimes it's just you have to wait for uh, somebody to come along to actually want to buy it at that price or multiple people to buy it at that price or sell it or for you to or they want to sell at that price so you can buy it. Yeah. And that brings me to a whole nother thing because you where we, we you only have a centralized NASDAQ and a centralized New York stock exchange. You can actually arbitrage crypto on exchanges too. People make a living doing that. Where if you look at Bitcoin on like um say you look at Bitcoin Cash on one site and it was a hundred bucks, and you look at Bitcoin Cash on another site, it was 125 and the demand was higher. People will buy that a bunch of Bitcoin at a hundred bucks and then go sell it on that other exchange and make 25% profits. Nice. Yeah. I mean, that's an extreme example or whatever, but even the exchanges are decentralized and the fact that you can go to competing exchanges, they're not controlled federally by a, a government entity. Well, for the time being, at least. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. They're trying. Yeah. They want to get their hands on it. Yeah. As soon as they figure out how to make money on it, they will. Or as soon as they figure out when your social credit's not high enough, they can shut your digital currency off. Doesn't the the government like has a Bitcoin wallet, right? Uh, I don't know. Probably. I'm sure the feds do from all the money they steal. They probably pump it in there. Because I saw, yeah, because I saw like that when they, when they raid somebody's house basically and they take their bitcoins. I, I saw something well, a couple like a few months ago where the one of the three letter agencies had uh, seized like a ton of bitcoin, and I guess it was in a cold wallet or something. And then yeah. somebody noticed that that I guess the CIA's <laughs> Coinbase wallet had just gotten this huge injection of Bitcoin. And so I guess I guess that was them taking some of that, what was on that wallet, and moving it into the CIA <laughs> Bitcoin wallet or whatever. Yeah, so, I mean, they would have to... I mean, I don't have all... I don't have my seed phrases memorized. I have them protected, stamped into metal. Um. But they, I mean, they have to get the seized phrase in order to transfer it. Unless you had it on exchange, then they can just have the exchange transfer it. So they could go to Coinbase and say, we need Dalton's money. And then, then Coinbase could give give you up or crypto.com, whatever you use. And Yeah, I don't know. Use. I don't know how they got it. I Yeah, yeah I... I just no, I know it, that I, it ha I know that it happens. So they could hold somebody's feet to the fire, too, and say, look, we're going to... You know, you need to give up the numbers. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny. They can they can do that, but they can't get Apple to give them uh, access to the iPhone of the guy who shot Donald Trump. Oh, is, were they asking for that? They kid didn't have any hear, social media, dude. That was crazy. That's you didn't like, hear about that? Yeah, because that happened years ago. With that oh, years ago. Happened. I remember years ago. I thought they were talking about the new guy. Yeah, the recent one. So th this is oh, the okay. like, second time that I'm aware of, of this being an issue where years ago there was a shooting in San Bernardino okay. in California. And the, the That's government... That's what I remember. Yeah, the feds wanted access to this guy's iPhone. And... They couldn't get it. There was no back door, there, and Apple had no, just was not like capitulating. Yeah. Um, and so this is the same thing with this uh, this guy that shot Trump in the year. Was that now they're trying to get access to his iPhone, and there's just they have no way to get into it because of Apple's like <laughs> policies or whatever. Yeah. Um, it opens up a whole can of worms, though. You want like if they let let it happen one time, then 
then yeah. you know what's going to stop them from continuously I, doing that. Look, if I'm Apple, I'd say I don't even care if you tried to kill the former president of the United States. We're not letting you have that iPhone. This, by the way, this is not financial advice, Apple. <laughs> <laughs> It's not financial advice. Apple, if you're listening, this is not financial advice. This is, yeah. This is, and, and this might actually be financial advice. Apparently, that guy spent like $1,500 on OnlyFans. Don't do that. Uh. <laughs> I, I, so here's the thing. You know how like you are, you are super confused about crypto and where all this money is coming from? Yeah. This is a little bit off topic, but like I can't. I can't fathom the amount of money that's going into OnlyFans. I think it's a Chinese or Russian <laughs> side. Tell me this. I think it's, I honestly I, believe it. Like, I think you're overthinking this, it because, like, I don't see how these people could get fifty-seven million dollars. Like, oh, the cash mail side girl. Yeah, and like, it's just there's a lot of them like that. I know a lot of them. Dude, aren't, the fucking lady a lot from multimillionaires, and it's just like I've never paid for any of that stuff. So maybe that's why it's so unfathomable. The, the to lady me. from Sopranos, Drea De Matteo, the lady played Adriana. She said in one month of OnlyFans, she made more money than the entire six years Sopranos was on. She made more money in one month of OnlyFans than HBO ever paid her. It's so I think I think you're overthinking. I think what it is because <clears throat> I get a taste of it with podcasting. Um, is that when you start in OnlyFans or start podcasts and it develop you you are able to develop some sort of following. Yeah. You you've created a community that has a m more intimate connection with you than they would have with like it, you, uh, other forms of entertainment or whatever it may be. So because of that, because of this like stronger bond they feel with you, with however they may feel it, yeah, they're more inclined to give you money. All and right. there's also you know, with some of these people, like the Cash Me Outside girl, the bad Barbie, so bad she, baby, or she, she is the bad baby. Fifty-seven million. Yeah. Right. Um, so that's there's also seven million right there. How much yeah. is an OnlyFans account? I don't even know how much hers is. A month. Is let's it say like, it's, let's say it's twenty. So two two point two million eighty. So for one month at least. She would have to have two million, almost three million people paying her twenty bucks, and there's three hundred sixty million people in the uh, in the United States. I don't think she's making fifty seven million dollars a month. Oh, in total, in total, in total. All right, so all she would need is she would need less than three million people to sign up one time. <laughs> yeah, and there's like four hundred million people in the United States alone. But like, can you sign up? Like if, if you're in like China and stuff too, so it's like probably like, okay. So, know. all right, that makes more sense now. Like if, like, but I th I think what it is 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 there's it's seven like, eight billion people on the planet, and she only needed um two point eight five million. Yeah, but I I think what it is is also there's like a psychological component to it where people. Now they feel like they have more of a like a closer relationship with this person. Yeah. Like now that they they like put their money into it and they have a direct link to this person. This is a perfect time, guys. And guys, if you're watching the show right now, head over to DaveRightTheThinker.com slash donations. You can scan here. <laughs> oh yeah. And you can pay one of the tiers here to give us a one time tip if you like this show. You can also use my crypto links here. Don't let bad baby get make more money than Dolan. <laughs> or yeah, or subscribe subscribe to the Patreon for the Crowder Boys. YouTube yeah, so it's so let's go over to the Crowder Boys here. Patreon.com slash the Crowder Boys. So I'm at the Crowder Boys here. You want to make sure head over see go to Cornfed, follow Dalton over on Cornfed. Yes. Go to Crowder Boys, follow them over in there. Here's the X account. Oh, so it doesn't look like you guys have the Patreon up yet. Oh yeah, I guess Craig, Craig oh, put it, it in the yeah, okay. he put it in the community thing. So here we go. Head over to Patreon. You're gonna go to the Crowder Boys. 
Right now, they just started it up. They got 48 members. Support Dalton and the boys. If you like comedy and you like hangs, um, I mean, I find it enjoyable. You get a lot. You get a lot for it here. So we start off as a Crowder head for f- five bucks a month. <laughs> uh, Bill Mar Burl. For the, new yeah, rules the new, for the 10 new bucks. rulers. <laughs> So there's a comedian called Sam Morrell in New York City, and he has a very adorable uh, speech <laughs> impediment. So he likes the friggin' Knicks. So this is oh, the man, Sam. The this is the Knicks. Sam Morrell. <laughs> and then we got. Please don't be mean to me for fifty fifty bucks. Yeah. This is a top tier. Please yeah, don't. If you subscribe to that else. one. You get yeah. everything from all the other tiers, and you could be a guest on the show. Yeah, is this the one where you get the sticker too? Uh, that's on the corn fed Patreon where I okay. have the sticker. We don't have any stickers on this one yet. We just we just started it yesterday. So oh, today, nice. Today is the 25th, so we started it yesterday, the 24th. Yeah, it's okay. already cooking, baby. Um, yeah, so if you like if you like hangs, you like comedy, you like podcasting or whatever, I would check out, um, I would definitely check out the Crowder Boys. I like the dynamic of you guys, but I also have known all all three of you for a while. Yeah, uh, corn fed is very easy to digest. Sal Michaels, who is your co-host, and some say the star of the show. Sal is corn the star fed. Of that. It's corn fed with out, all fruit. I gotta figure out how to get star. more. Yeah, I gotta figure out how to get more people into corn fed because it's, I think like people love the Crowder Boys because yeah. there's so much. It's an ensemble. And corn, but I think a corn fed is more and more people discover Sal. They're gonna really love him. Yeah, Sal is a, a comedian savant. Let's just say <laughs> he, he is. He consistently makes me laugh. He's very very funny. Yeah, I yeah. felt bad when he came in the other day when you and me were going. I know he probably had stuff going on at home. Um, but like he was like zip zapping and zooming, and we were we were in a serious talk, and he was like all fun, you know. He's if you want a yeah, lot of laughs per minute, I think you're going to get more. Uh, I don't know. I would check both shows out. Be I careful. Check out don't, don't, please don't be mean to Robbie and Craig. No, no I'm not. It's definitely, <laughs> definitely check out both, both shows. I think you'll enjoy it. And, but what I was saying, though, is, you know, because with these podcasts, like there are people. I mean, you we've seen it with different shows like Matt and Shane. They make millions of dollars. Or, yeah. I guess Matt does. I think Shane's done with it now. <laughs> uh, but um, no, he was yeah. back on. He's in. He's in Philly now, and him and Billy were hanging out. But in the same way that you can't understand, like how the Cash Me Outside girl made fifty-seven million dollars showing her titties on the OnlyFans. There's probably a bu- somebody like my dad cannot wrap his head around how Matt and Shane are just recording like the dumbest conversations of all time. They're yeah. making like five hundred thousand dollars a month or whatever they're making, and so even with our shows now, like Crowder Boys and Cornfed and all that, there are people who tune in every week and will like just throw money at us, and they're doing like yeah. in the Patreons as well. And I think there is like there's a part of it where uh, we are begging for money. <laughs> there is that. We're providing well, I think a service it's a, of entertainment, so it's, we, yeah, it's a so, voluntary exchange of services. Yeah, yeah. so it's like, and, and, then I th- and I think people are inclined to do so. I think they enjoy doing it because they are, like, supporting people they like. And it, they, they're, like, part of a, like, now part of this, like, community. Yeah. They're, you know, it's like, it's like a collect, it's all... It's probably podcasting is probably the closest we'll ever get to functioning communism because <laughs> it is very collective. Yeah, yeah, it, it's it all be. very it, yeah, it, but it, it's wrapped inside of a capitalist structure. So it's like there is a collective that's gi- uh, giving the podcasters money. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I think it was really funny one one episode where Sal. Yeah, the crossover episode where Sal came on the Crowder Boys to cover for Robbie and your other co-host, Crack Amico. He's a rapper. You guys should check him out on his YouTube channel as well if you like 
uh, comedy and comedy music and all uh, sorts of stuff. But he said, this is a Italian friend simulator <laughs> when you're hanging out with <laughs> Sal, Sal yeah. eating a sandwich on microphone. And it really is it, like, it is friend simulator at time. Yeah. Um, well, it's a, and that's the learning thing, each but, people's personalities and having fun. Yeah. With these only fans, girls, and just like the podcast, like the OnlyFans girls have a certain personality and each one, you know, has a certain kind of titty and pussy and butthole that they only they can provide. Guys, this is not financial advice. It's not financial advice. But I'm saying like, you know, yeah. not in, so it's, it's like not everyone can do what they're doing and there is a market because they fulfill this like one specific thing. Yeah. You can only... You can only get the Cash Me Outside's girl's titties on her OnlyFans. You know what I mean? And so, like, with these podcasts, like... With, yeah, you I know, guess. And, and like I said, we just ran the numbers. She made $57 million, and that's over a couple of years now. I think she just turned 21, and yeah. she started at 18, so that's 18, So, 19, so the wall is fast approaching. Yeah, so that's 712000 a year for four yeah. years. And she probably good. popped off good. pretty quick in the in in that's the pretty... in the beginning in the yeah, yeah it's, I mean, it ain't bad it ain't bad money <laughs> <laughs> it's not a bad job if you it's if not you a bad job it. at all man but I mean yeah, yeah so like with the podcast and stuff is like you know it's similar it's it is only fans adjacent all of this because not everyone can do it you know you have to have a certain yeah. personality you have to have something that people want to like tune into and then and then. You, you know, people then are inclined to support because they can only get that personality from this one show or whatever. I was I was amazed. We're going on two hours now, guys. So we'll we'll, we'll probably cut it short soon. But we did five hours <laughs> yeah. the day on Corn Fed, and there was people in the live stream that they were there just having they a blast. With stuck us, around, so. yeah. Yeah, I've been, and that's been like something I've been trying out is just like, what? Is, there's nothing stopping me, at least as the way my life is now, from doing long ass shows yep. and just having them out there. There's no reason that you have to follow the trend of one hour free, one hour Patreon, everybody set up or whatever. I could just yep. let it rip. I guess, honestly, that's kind of the Rogan model, really. Is he? I like does, to let it rip. So even when I make videos for for Dave Wright the Thinker, which is my philosophy thing that I'm trying to get people over to, sometimes they're just five minutes of just like a mental epiphany I had, and sometimes it's an an hour and a half of me going into, and you know, the the ex description of what a true anarcho capitalist definition would be, you know, yeah. and everything in between. So it's it's whatever the the idea needs to accumulate you know what i mean so i guess with some of these podcasts it's just fun it's goofy in like an hour is an hour but if you guys are flowing well why shut it off and then if you're not flowing that well why you know why keep pushing yourself to do something that, <laughs> that <laughs> sometimes, shut sometimes we sometimes we should have shut it off a couple hours ago <laughs> there are those yeah. episodes but well, I mean, if you people know. are still hanging out. It's like people are still hanging out, but it's just one of those things where I I, I get it, and um, I think streaming's the future. I think you guys have figured that out. Oh yeah, dude. Yeah. I think that. I mean, our Patreon is doing surprise like very well for having it one day. Yeah. Um, but I do think because everything's like always changing, that the the window to get into podcasting, like the whatever it is, however it's existed for the last like 10, 12, 15 years. Mm -hmm. Like that's the, like that's the bubble that's like bursting. Like all these shows that like record an episode and upload it and try to get followers or whatever. I think like much like crypto is still early. I think streaming is still like an early thing that not a lot of people have like figured out that they can do it or what to do with it. Because yeah. like most of streaming right now, really is like the fucking uh apes at the beginning of 2001 like <laughs> yeah. it's it, yeah. and yeah. you know because it, it is like i've seen some streams like the stuff that makes a lot of money and it's people who haven't figured out anything that's entertaining they literally just turn on the camera 
and that's about all they have to offer, and they're like m- extremely successful. Yeah, <clears throat> like it's just a I guy it works. Like, I've seen some comedians that you know have tried like streaming video games and it doesn't work out. Then I've seen other guys that stream it and it does work out. Here's where and it's they keep hold, a fan base. So where it's going to hold comedians back, like why they why comics may not be able to do it, is because they're such raging fucking narcissists that. The idea of sharing their time or engaging with, like, just the people, yep. they can't, they, they don't know how to do it. Like, that's literally like, the only reason that I do this. I, most of the people that I talk to on Twitter have under 100 followers. Yeah. And, like, those are the people that I like to hang out with. I actually don't like that it's only pushing the big names to me, being not the people that I'm, like, interacting with anymore. Yeah. Because, like, I've I've seen it where comic like comics get into this like weird thing where they kind of will only ever be able to engage with other comedians and people like at equal or higher levels of success. Yeah. So when you're like if you're streaming something, you're directly engaged with that audience, mm-hmm. and so you, you kind you have to like I don't know is it it's it's a different thing where it's like. You do have to be more of a, a man, I guess, man of the people in that way. You can't just broadcast and whoever listens, listens. There's like people tuning in live, interacting yeah. with you as it's happening. And if they felt so if like, they feel neglected, they're going to be like, well, I'll just go to some place where they are interacting with me then. Yeah. Yeah. Because that, that actually might be the thing that somebody like Kai Sinat or any of these guys has figured out is that it's as simple as just like, engaging with the chat and yep. like meeting people kind of at their level where where like I've seen comics who just can't do that. I you know seen like, like ways too. I've seen I won't get I won't say names names, but I went to go see a medium sized comedian. We that we both know we could talk about off air <laughs> and his opener who's a I think is really funny. And I had seen his opener a couple of times open for some other people. And I was with my buddy saying, oh, I actually met the, the opener or whatever. He's really good. Like, we're going to have a great time. And he was kind of like, okay, buddy. And I'm like, no, I, I did. He's really good. We, we actually hung out at the hotel afterwards and had some drinks, whatever. And he was like, kind of giving me the like sure thing. And then he went out of his way when we were in, seated in the club. They, he left the green room and came over and said hi to me when I was seated in the club. And like then I was even more excited to see him that he took the time. He remembered me from the show before or whatever. Yeah. And I've been a big fan of him ever, like ever since, just because I know he's like a cool guy. He remembered me and he's doing the work. And I know if they get really big, that like they can't always do that. But that's, I guess, my equivalent of, like, I when that guy's in town now, I always want to go see him. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I mean, you know, you, you know, we're all human. Yeah. Well, I'm saying some people, like, I'll just say who it is. It's not a big deal. No one knows who. But it's Lewis's opener. It's Scott Chaplin. Oh, okay. And I've seen him open for uh, Brendan Sagalo too, and I hung out with Brendan and them, and then I ran and I, I hung out with Brendan at Skankfest in Vegas when we went to that comedy show. And b- very friendly, open, said hi to me, didn't treat me like a stranger after we just hung out like a month earlier at his like show in Providence, and same thing with Scott. And then I have other people, like literally... <laughs> I'm talking to Scott right here outside the comedy club, and Lewis is right here. He won't even make eye contact with me or have a conversation. Like, I oh yeah, I think this. Lewis is. I think Lewis's <laughs> interactions with what he would probably be considered the what he would consider the riffraff, yeah, are like transactional. Like he can be, he'll be cordial, yeah. but it's like you know, do you got weed? You want to smoke weed? You, can we smoke weed together? Is like you that's can basically offer, what he did. Me and Scott he, were in a, like a deep conversation about. Greg um, Gerardo and uh, Patrice O'Neill. And then as soon as they were done smoking, Lewis is like, hey, let's get out of here. And Scott's like, I can use my ride. I got to go. And they went to yeah. the hotel. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think with Lewis, it's like, what what can you offer him? Like, what can you do for him? He'll hang out with you. But if you don't have, like, if you don't have anything to offer you, he'll be like, all right, hey, how's it going? I'll scram. 
<clears throat> yeah, but I like and that. that. And that translate, by the way, though, that translates to him trying to do streaming because he's very bad at it. I've, I've like, never tuned in. I've seen that he did it, and I know he was giving away tickets to the comedy festival. Because I, but... I know he does like Call of Duty stuff, like he does like Twitch streams or whatever. Yeah. And he's bad at the video game, and he's also bad at just like engaging with with the audience. You're <laughs> yeah. just watching him just silently be bad at Call of Duty. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So that's not good. I follow a couple of streamers. I play Diablo Four, and so I never really got streaming before, and I won't watch like eight hours, but. Once you're starting to play end game and you're logging in every day and you have to do certain things, it is kind of cool to be like, okay, what does this top guy do? So you log in and you watch a couple hours of them playing. You're like, okay, that makes sense. He goes and does these to get resources. Then he goes over here. Then he runs this and then he gets this for drops. And so then I'm like, well, I never have to watch that again, but it is cool to see. You watch, you watch it live or you just watch the recording? The recording of it. Because okay. um, I, I watched one that was really cool the other day. Because I don't watch tons of streams, but the guy that cre- in, created Doom, John Romero. Yeah. So this is really fascinating because some psycho made a Doom 2 mod called My House. Okay. That's one of the most like intricate works of art I've ever seen. It's like this whole, this like whatever he did. I don't know how he did. I don't know how anyone's this creative. But it's one yeah. of the craziest things I've ever seen. Just like a guy do, it had to have dri- it had to have driven him to like madness. You, you'll have to look it up. This Doom Two mod because like it looks like what it's just like for? A, what game is it for? Doom Two. It's like oh, a, oh okay. I was miss I was mishearing you. I was missing you. I thought you were saying Dune D U N E. No no Doom like the movie, and they made a mod of like. The characters from Doom no, no, no. on top of a game. The video game okay, Doom. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. I saw so somebody made a mod for Doom 2 called My House that is a complete descent into madness, but also yeah. like weirdly a work of art. Because at first you think you're just playing like a mod of Doom 2 that takes place in like a house. Yeah. But then it starts, there's all these like, just all these different twists and turns it takes where. There's much more going on than you thought. It's hard to explain. Did, did we but, talk about this? Somebody's redoing Zelda, the original ones for Nintendo. Um, and he's redoing them with all new artwork, but everything's the same. It's just it's just instead of being top down view, it's like um three quarter view at an angle. I and seen, so the, no. the things are bigger. And he's redoing the original Zelda for Nintendo NES but he's redoing all the artwork for it. So like the, you know, the wizard that you see is like upright and it's a real wizard and link is much like much bigger and fires actual fire. Uh, But the game, the game's exactly the same. Everything's in the same exact place. The only thing that he's changed is the graphics. The mechanics are all the same and everything. Okay. Yeah. Now this is, this is different. This is like a, the map is completely, it's like a whole built kind of from the ground up, but like based on the Doom. code of Doom yeah. 2, but yeah. but it's all like a whole new thing. I know you're but into I, Doom, D-U-N-E, so that's what I thought I, you were saying. I, I thought not Doom, the shooter no, Doom, D-O-O-M. Now no, this is Doom. Yeah. So yeah, the, the guy who created Doom, John Romero, he, he does streams now. And I watched like, because I'd found this, like a video explaining this mod that like, I saw the video recommended me on YouTube. It was like an hour and 40 minutes. And it was like the craziest Doom mod ever. And I was like, all right, whatever. I clicked on it. I was like, I'll watch five minutes. Dude, I, I got hooked in so much. And the, I watched the whole fucking thing. I was like, <laughs> there's a live fat. stream? The, well, the first video I saw was just like a video explaining what this was. Yeah. And like really going into detail. And like a guy who had played it and was like going over like just what this Doom 2 mod is. But then I found like a like a four hour stream of the guy who made Doom playing it himself, and I watched gotcha. that also. <laughs> Dude, I yeah. I was like I was so it was such a pleasant surprise because like I discovered like whatever this is, and I was like, yeah, I'll give it five minutes, and I'll be back on Twitter, and I was like sucked in because that's like, the beauty of the internet and like all the different. <laughs> 
decentralized information that's out there. Like, you know, I mean, there's so many niches that you've never even heard of. And then there's a whole community wrapped around it. Oh yeah, dude. I remember when I first discovered SCP years ago, you were, you were going down SCP. No. Yeah. You know me. It's, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can't believe you don't know, but this is like such a, it's been around for so long at this point. It's what like is it called? SCP? SCP. Secure, contain, protect. It's an augmented reality wiki page. Uh, oh, they, I see this now, yeah. Yeah, so it's all categorized into like case files. And so there's a um, this like shadowy organization, I think is just referred to as the organization that um looks for and like contains anomalies in reality so it could be like a spooky monster or just like a staircase that goes nowhere or like just different shit like that i'm listening like, i was just looking there, it up on the second dude, there's gotta now. there's like seven thousand of these at this point yep <clears throat> and a lot of them are really well done like it's like really creative writing because it's all formatted as like a uh like a file so it'll be like, you know, here's the class and here's, you know, whatever. And then it'll give you like the origins of it, the containment procedure, and then like the history or whatever. And so as you read it, you like, you are able to piece together in your head the story based on this very like clinical professional case file. Yeah. It's really interesting the way they're formatted because it, it all reads like a... Uh, and it, I could see getting caught up in that for... For too long. Oh, dude, I've thing. gone down some SCP rabbit holes where yeah. I've just been hours reading these things. Because some of the some of them are genuinely scary, and others are like interesting, and some are funny. But it, but the thing that gets me is like how many of them are actually really well done. Where I'm like, somebody just anonymously took the time to do this because it yeah. just took a lot of work. Yeah, it's like those pranks when people set up a prank that they never get to see happen. You just put yeah. it out there and walk away, <laughs> and oh, that's yeah, that, the that's the laugh. Just yeah, doing yeah. An, doing a practical joke for yourself. <laughs> yeah, well, they were the one that, that I was thinking of is like I don't know how many times he does it to different people, but he did it to Shane Gillis, Kill, Kid Rock, had a, a watch, and he tried to give it to Shane Gillis in the green room with all his boys around. He's like, "This this is like a hundred k watch. I want you to have it," and then. Shane was like, I can't take this. And he's like, it's yours, man. Don't worry about it. I love the work. And he walked away. And then Shane's like, I can't take this. We got to give it back to him. And then one of the other guys was like, I would, I'm going to take it then. And they're all like kind of fighting over it or whatever. And then they looked it up on eBay and it's worth like 20 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> but like, That's awesome. he, he just like, I guess it's a prank that he does. And he's never there to actually see the mayhem that ensues. He just like, He's just walks an away. Chaos. He just awesome. does an agent chaos. That's that's, yeah. that's very funny. <laughs> and sometimes it's weeks and months later. Like I guess one of them was, like the guy was wearing it and his like circulation was getting cut off on his wrist, and he didn't know anything about watches, and it was too small for him. He kept like wearing it everywhere, and he was like, "Dude, that watch doesn't even fit you. You got to get a new one." He's like, "Dude, I can't, dude." This is like he's like this is like a fifty thousand dollar watch Kid Rock gave me. He's like, dude, that's like a twenty dollar watch. <laughs> Got any watches? <laughs> and he's been like cutting his circulation off the wrist for months for some clouds. That's very funny. That's great. Yeah. And it's just like Kid Rock's not even. It, it, I, like, again, works. these are both like uh, hearsay. Like you know, uh, this is lore, so I don't know how true it is or not. But well, the funny, I, I like the, to I believe mean, that it is. The funny thing about the because that can only work. If you're someone at Kid Rock's, like he had to get rich and famous, yeah, to be able to even think of doing something like that. Because the only way anyone would believe that he's giving away a hundred thousand dollar watch is if he has Kid Rock money. Yeah, yeah. Well, the thing with <laughs> Shane, when it happened to Shane, he was at his thing down in Nashville or whatever, and he had performed a couple times and did all this stuff. And they had an event, and they all hung out, and they were at the ranch and stuff. And so afterwards, he's like, dude, this is just like amazing. I always want you to remember this or whatever. So it like it kind of made sense. You know what I mean? It still was like it's still crazy, but at the same time, it kind of made sense, like you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah because I awesome could because for Kid Rock, a hundred K is nothing. 
So, no. you know, it, you know, yeah, it kind of like if it, if Kid Rock offered me a watch like that, I'd be like, wow, I mean, that's a lot of fucking money. But I guess for him, it's not, you know, cool. Yeah. So it is a funny prank. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. And that you just the fact that you just you you're never there to like you like Ari Shafir is the other one that I heard will do stuff like that. And a little bit like like somebody will find the prank like a month later and bring it up to him and he'll be like, Oh yeah, I forgot. I forgot that oh, I did yeah. I forgot that I did that. Yeah. So. All right. Well, this is this is a pretty good episode. I want to share the screens one more time here. So I'm going to post a video here on Dave Wright, the capitalist on my YouTube channel. Follow Dalton over on yeah, Twitter twi at Dalton Twitter. Lee Pruitt. And then Crowder Boys Patreon <laughs> as we went over. <laughs> you know what's funny is we, we keep – we've said – like we keep saying the Crowder boy, the name of the show is the Crowder Boys or whatever. Yeah. And it's fun it's funny because that's like more in our like consciousness now than what we base the name on, which was making fun of Steven Crowder. Yeah. Like we we keep forgetting that like it's the it's a really silly name for a show because we were like all the you know, arena of ideas and all that kind of stuff is just like making fun of that kind of guy. What's crazy to me is I didn't realize that that was it about until later on because it makes perfect sense. So the lore of the show for people tuning in that don't know is Dalton was on a show called The Loud Boys with Robbie Goodwin, who's currently on The Crowder Boys. So it was Dalton, Robbie Goodwin, and a third person. Well, then they started this new show that was similar to that, and they added this guy named Crack Amico, which is his rap name. So I thought Crowder was Loud Boys with Crack. So it was like the Crowd Boys, the Crowder Boys. And it makes perfect yeah. sense that it was a spinoff of their original show. Because you would yeah, find out it's making fun of Stephen Crowder, yeah, the political commentary guy. Yeah, your your explanation makes too much sense because yeah, it's like yeah, the next evolution of the Loud Boys would be the Louder Boys plus Crack equals the Crowder Boys. That actually makes sense. And no, it was not based on that. It we literally just streamed something together, and then we're trying to figure out a name for it, and. I think somebody on Twitter suggested it. Like somebody was like, are you guys going to keep doing that Crowder boy show you were doing? And it, it stuck out to me because it was such a silly name, yeah. but it fit, it fit with like, cause we were just like making fun of like those kinds of guys, like who consider themselves like intellectual gladiators. Yeah. In their arena, in the arena ideas. of ideas. Yeah. Yeah. So we just went with the Crowder boys, but now Quite like easier to, to say we're the idiot investors and then people can come here and, realize that we're trying to figure all this out but we're not a hundred percent we're not a hundred percent sure this is truly not financial advice no it's it's uh, it's not i mean i because i um don't know what i'm doing <laughs> yeah and i'll have all the links i'm going to put all the links to all these channels down in the description of my youtube channel along with a syllabus and we'll get back to do this is this so just ended here, Dalton. What do you think of this? Did you enjoy yourself? Yeah. Do you think there's something that we should do again? Um, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, I would like to try streaming from my channel. I mean, I've had because I did an you know, I did an episode like a stream recently with Drew Flores called, you know, we did an idiot investor. Okay. So I, you know, I don't mind um, streaming it from your channel. That's fine with me. I was hoping that I have about I don't know, 4,500 4, subscribers here, and I just wanted them to be familiar with you. Yeah. Uh, and they could go over to the thing. So rather than just have it sit here in whatever, uh, just having this channel sit here in eight, it kind of fit with what was already going on at, at this thing, which was like money-making ideas and, and teaching common in a good way, like the everyday person these things that seem like they're elitist endeavors yeah, and to help somebody with a W2 mindset. I used to always talk about this, but somebody with a W2 mindset get to a 1099 
mindset, get to an LLC mindset, and then hopefully get to an investment mindset where you're free of uh, of things. And it might not be for everybody, but that was the, the, the reason I brought it over here. So if we live stream it on your show, I'm fine with that as well on your channel. So I'll just make announcements and then maybe post a video on my channel to pull everybody back and forth between the two. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm down to try whatever. I mean, I just, um, yeah, I'm down. <laughs> Cause your right. channel does have, your channel does have a lot of subscribers. So, uh, I mean, I appreciate you sharing your audience and, I'm if they're still here, I got I did get views today, and I got some comments. So well, I still think some of them are here. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we'll see. What I don't know how the algorithms work, so maybe okay. when you post this, like my name is more active in the algo these days, so it might catch it and people will find it. Yeah. But I mean, and then well, but you yeah, can I mean, also download it hopefully and put it up on your channel, so you can put it. Yes, like, I'm not into intellectual I, property, so yeah, because I've got the. I've got the YouTube. I got grandfathered in. Yeah. I was on, I, I downloaded a YouTube downloader extension for Chrome. Yeah. And when they got rid of all those, I still have it. So I can nice. download YouTube videos. Um, what happened? 